Hey y'all, my name's Megan and this is my floss tube channel where I talk about cross stitch and quilting. It has been an embarrassingly long amount of time since my last video. I think we're going on eight or nine months here. Um, and I have a few, a few reasons. I have no excuse for May through August. I just got busy with life, enjoying summer. Um, I had a almost two year old at that point. So just playing with her all day, entertaining her. Um, and then from September through December, if you've seen my previous videos, you know that I'm in nursing school. So school started back up at the end of August and in December I finished my second semester of nursing school. So I am a little over halfway done now because we are about halfway through the third semester and it's a four semester program. And that's very exciting right now. I'm finishing up my OB class and then I'll start peds in March. And this is the semester I've been looking forward to since before I even started nursing school because I'm fairly confident I want to go into either OB, peds, or NICU nursing. So it's fun to get the clinical experience and the hands-on experience in those areas. In September, um, so school started back up and then um, I got really, really sick September through December for about... 20-ish weeks because we're expecting baby number two. Um, so baby number two is due at the end of May and here's a little bump update. I am 26 weeks now. So there's baby. We do not know if baby is a boy or a girl. This is very likely our last one and I knew I always wanted to have at least one surprise at birth. So because it's probably our last we're gonna do it this time. So I'm very, very much looking forward to finding out if baby is a boy or a girl. I'm hoping for a girl, just because I have a sister and we're pretty close. So my first is a little girl and I'd like her to have a sister. But I'm thinking it's a boy, just because this pregnancy has been very different than my first, which I know means absolutely nothing. It's a wives tale and they always say each pregnancy is different. My husband thinks baby is a girl. So either way, one of us is gonna be right in May. So we shall see. Um, but yeah, so I got really, really sick. Um, my first pregnancy, it was just really the first trimester. So up until about like 12, 13, 14 weeks. This one, it was just all the way through, tw I think 20 weeks was the last time I got sick. So it was quite rough. And then with nursing school on top of that, I somehow managed to pass with very little studying on my end. And then... <laughs> We told my daughter a lot, um, you know, mama can't do that right now, mama's belly hurts. And she saw me getting sick quite a bit. At one time she ran over to the potty and she pretended to be sick. So I was like, oh my goodness. At that point I knew, I was like, oh, you've seen a lot, haven't you, kid? But feeling great now, feeling a little bit big, slightly running out of room. I have at least 14-ish weeks left to go. My daughter was a week late, so I don't know. We'll see. That makes me a little nervous, but... So far, so good. So you are here for the stitching. I am going to run through just my very few finishes from last year since my, my May video. And then I am going to show you my whips. And I surprisingly don't have as many as I thought I did. And then I'll go through my whip go board and I'll show you two projects that are kitted up that I will be starting at some point this year. So let's get started. Okay, so my finishes. None of them are fully finished, so I'm just keeping them in one of the little cheap Amazon bags that we all know and love. Um, I think, so I know for sure my mom's gonna come up this summer once baby's here. My sister will probably come up too at some point, but I think I'm gonna wait to finish them, these pieces, until they come, just because they have more experience finishing cross-stitch projects. I mean, I don't have any fear of sewing or quilting or anything. I'm a quilter, like I made all these bags. The sewing machine is no problem. I'm just, I guess, once you fully finish a piece, I feel like you're committed to it, depending on what finish you do. And I'm just not ready quite to commit yet. So I think that's what's holding me back. So, and these are in no particular order. I don't think this is the order I finished them in, but this first one is by Heart and Hand. It is Bird in the Hand Valentine's Day. So I changed up the colors quite a bit. So I went through, it calls for DMC. Let me see. Well, it calls for classic color works, but it gives the DMC conversion. So I went through my DMC 
list to pull what I had. And there were four colors I did not have. So then I looked at the pattern, tried to pull similar colors, but some of them like this brownish color. I don't know what color that actually is. That's supposed to be uh, DMC 839. And it just looks like a very dark brown. And I didn't want brown in my Valentine's Day piece, so I switched it out. Oh, I forgot to grab a board. Let's see. Okay, here's some, some paper. Oops. So here is my finished piece, and there are some... I did take creative license with this piece, as I do all pieces, because there are mistakes in there, but... I think it's super cute. And then there's that little charm at the end. So, yeah, it's adorable. It's on, I believe it's 28 count vintage smoky white cashew linen. I believe that's what that is. Don't quote me. My next finish, this is actually a pattern I purchased off of Etsy. It is from the store Needle of Love, and it's called Be Happy. And this is what it looks like. Again, this one called for certain colors. I pulled ones that I liked from my DMC, DMC pile. And this is it. So I just thought it would be super adorable for summer. It has the golden flowers and little bees buzzing around. This um, designer, she actually has a lot of patterns that are in this kind of checked gingham mason jar style. She has them for different seasons, different holidays. She has them for birthdays and Christmas and Halloween. She has a really cute one for 4th of July and it says freedom right here and it's got red and blue flowers. And I think I might purchase that one, but it was a pretty quick stitch and especially down here and the jar because it's just a pattern. You don't need the actual chart with you. So that was even easier. And then my last finish was this one. I'm very proud of. I love it. This one is Holly and Hart's Mystery Sampler Club by Lizzie Kate. And oh, that is part three. So this was a three-part mystery sampler. So part one, two, and three. And this came out years ago. So obviously it was not a mystery when I purchased. So in this one, my sister and my mother and I are actually, we had planned to all do it together. So our plan was to start in June. We were going to do two months per part. So we would do June and July, August, September, October, November. And then that would give us enough time to fully finish it for December. Well, needless to say, none of us finished in December. Um, I'm the only one that finished it, and I just finished it at the beginning of January. But it's, again, not fully finished. So I did change up nearly, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven of the, seven of the ten colors I switched up. So you can see that Lizzie Kate called for a lot of pinks and like pinky reds and I that's just not my thing for Christmas I like the traditional colors a lot so that's what I went with and I love pulling my own floss um, I know some people kind of get nervous and they're like well, what if I do all this stitching and it doesn't turn out or I don't like the way it turns out but that is not a design decision I suffer from I mean when, when I quilt my fabric pulling in the beginning is one of my favorite parts so I think it kind of goes hand in hand but okay let's see this is a long piece let's see how I'm gonna do this okay bear with me here so I'll show you the whole thing and then I'll do close-ups of each individual part so there it is I absolutely love it Okay, now we'll do the close-up of each part. So here's part one. And 
and then part two. And then part three. So yeah, that, once I actually started working on it, it did not take very long, especially part two, because it was all the wording on all the letters and those go really, really fast. Again, the border is the same throughout all three parts. So once you did like three little bits over here, you knew the pattern and it was easy to just kind of zip through that. Smoky white or 28 count vintage smoky white cashel linen is what this is stitched on. And I don't give myself like a ton of room around the edges. This is probably like an inch and a half up top and then maybe like two inches on the left and the right and then two inches at the bottom. Probably just because linen is expensive and I don't want to waste it by cutting it off. So I don't know. I've never fully finished a piece, so we'll see if that comes to bite me in the butt. But I don't think so. This one, I want to just get a nice frame and just frame it. I think my other two, I'll probably finish them in some sort of like pillow finish, but to be determined. So those are my three finishes from 2021 slash 2022. Onto the wax. Okay. Oh, okay. I don't have an actual picture of this in the bag. So I just have the chart, so I'll have to put up a picture of what this looks like. It is called Happy Fall Pumpkins, and I purchased it off of Etsy. I'll list the designer below. Oh, it's from Tiana Handmade. Tiana Handmade Happy Fall Pumpkins. It is adorable. Here's a picture of what it will look like when it's done. I started this well before September because that's when I started getting sick. So probably in July, beginning of August. And ooh, there is like maybe 20 stitches in this. So there you go. Not a whole lot to show for it. It is being stitched on 28 count linen, vintage, smoky white. And then I'm going to show you the colors because they're gorgeous. Okay, they're in a heap here, so give me a, a second. If I would have like really got prepared for this, I would have gotten this organized and made sure I had all the pictures in here, but I didn't. I'm in limited time. I'm actually procrastinating. I should be writing a medical ethics paper right now, but I'm not because that just sounds like a ball of fun. Okay, so here are the DMCs. Lots of like smoky, earthy blues and greens and grays and creams. So it's a very, very beautiful pattern and I think it'll look great when it turns out. So I'll pick that up at some point later this year. Okay, my next whip. Actually, let's do this one. This is my longest whip. This is the one I started, I think, back in 2018. And it is a Mill Hill Buttons and Beads kit. It's called Winter Wonderland. And if you've seen my videos before, you've seen this. And I'm like 99.9% .9 sure that I have done absolutely nothing on it since my last video in May. All I have left to do is finish adding the beads. I've even added most of the beads on here um, but, so here it is and I love the beads I love the dimension the beads give it and I have no trouble stitching on the perforated paper so I actually just ordered I have an Easter one and then I just ordered either one or two winter ones not Christmas because I wanted to I live in Michigan and we have winter for like four months so I wanted to keep it up past Christmas speaking of winter yesterday I woke up it was 50 degrees and raining by noon there was no snow anywhere 
And then by the time I went to bed, it was 24 degrees. And when I woke up this morning, there was four inches of snow outside. So my husband went to work at like 6 a.m. So he shoveled like a third of the driveway so he could get out because we don't like to roll over the snow. Then you pack it down and it's hard to, sh to get up and it melts and turns to ice and it's just a mess. So he shoveled enough to get out and then my car is in the garage. So it didn't have any snow on it. But the entire other half of the garage was covered in four inches of snow. So I shoveled that and I shoveled and salted the sidewalk. It was definitely a workout. He did fuss at me. Don't don't think that he told me to do it or anything. I, I did it on my own. I'm pregnant. I'm not unable to do so. But Okay, whip number, let's see. One, two, three. One, two. This is three. Okay. This I bought in May when I went to Florida to my in-laws winter home. It is Primitive Santa by Teresa Kogut. And I just thought he was really cute. Um, I don't know if you've noticed, but I don't typically or like ever use the called for fabric. This is definitely too primitive. The fabric, the, um, brownie antique color is just not my style i like i don't know mo more modern neutrals i guess and she also calls for weeks dye works dmc and valdani i believe is how you say it there's a whole slew of different uh threads in here so i did it all uh, mostly in weeks unless there was just a teeny teeny tiny tiny bit of um the thread needed in which case i just did dmc but uh i got a lot done here i'll just show you okay so i have no idea what fabric this is but it is some kind of if i had to guess i would say some kind of 28 count gray linen here's PSA read the pattern don't assume you know what the designer is thinking when they created the pattern I saw these little scallops and I counted you know stitch count for the first one and then I was good to go and I was just stitching and stitching and stitching and stitching. And then I get to the bottom and I'm like, what in the world? Do you see that? There's like three stitches left. These are not all supposed to be the same stitch width or stitch length. I think it was like, I counted eight stitches. So I just did eight stitches, eight stitches, eight. St no, it's like eight, nine, seven, eight, nine, seven or something like that. So that put me off for a little while. And then I was like, well, you know what? I'll just quit fooling with the border and I'll do Santa. So I'm working on Santa. He's mostly done. He just has a little bit left of his coat down here. And then he has his two boots and he'll be done. And I can't decide what to do because I will avoid ripping at all costs, even if it means like not touching the project again. And this is far too much ripping. For me to ever even like consider so I think what I've decided I'm going to do is down here there's a tiny tiny space and then over here there will also be another tiny space so I think what I'm gonna do is I'll just use the red floss and I'm just gonna put my initials here and the year here and I'll look, I think it'll look totally fine but. so that is primitive Santa by Teresa Kogut and I love it I think it's on my whip go board, although I'm not positive, but even if it's not, that for sure will be done by Christmas this year. Okay, let's do this one. So this next whip slash finish, although not FFO, is hands on design, a year of celebrations. So this is actually my sister's pattern and she has a floss tube channel and I'll link her below. Her floss tube name is homegrown and handmade and she's done quite a few more videos than I have but she had this and she has not stitched it and I don't think she actually had plans on stitching it and 
I made it known when I went there in May that I liked it. So she actually surprised me and mailed it to me for either my birthday or Christmas. So I've started on these. And wouldn't you know, if you've seen any of the new market releases or you pay attention to hands-on design, Kathy Haberman has just released A Year of Celebration Season 2. And I do like quite a few of them. I'm not a fan of all of them. So I think what I've decided is I am going to buy season two and I will stitch any of these that I like that I haven't already done. And then I'll stitch all of the season two that I like. And then it's not like these are going to be right next to each other. So I have different shelves in my house. I'll just, if I have two for July, I'll put one on one shelf and one on another shelf. But if I only have one for August, I'll just put it on one shelf. No big deal. So for this one, I have done, I'm doing, so sh it calls for fancy floss, like weeks, classic color works and gentle arts. And then it gives you the DMC conversion. So I'm trying for the most part to stick true to the feel of the colors that Kathy calls for, but some of them like let's here, perfect January. So January calls for this lime green and green is actually my favorite color. However, I don't know. That's too loud for me for winter. So instead I went with a different kind of blue. So I did two different blues. I have January, February, and I believe all of March done. And this, ooh, I don't know. Oh, here we go. This is stitched on fiber on a whim, 28 count cashew linen um, cappuccino. I have Purchased it from Fat Quarter Shop. I was very excited to see that they carried fiber on a whip. So here is January. And then February. And then March. So with these, just like with my other finishes, I had intended to get them stitched ahead of the month and then these are very likely going to be turned into just little pillow finishes with some cute little trimmer ribbon around the edges. Um, so I wanted to get them stitched ahead of time, finish them and have them on display. I have a lot of cute little shelves in my house that are just very empty <laughs> and get them displayed for the month of the season, but can't FFO anything. Okay, next whip. This is also hands-on design. Kathy Hoverman is my favorite designer, if you have not figured that one out yet. This is the... Woo, Scary Apothecary series. So I'm not going to flip through all of them. I'm sure you've seen these around. And I am... I did it quite a bit last year. This... I don't know what this is. I think this is probably an even weave, but it's definitely 28 count. 28 count is my sweet spot. So I have three done and I'm almost done the fourth one. So we have skeleton polish. And these, I, th I believe I'm using all the color for colors. If not, I've only switched out one or two. Broomstick Fuel, Spider Legs, and then the other one that I'm mostly done with is Cauldron Cleaner. So they are all on the same piece of fabric. There are, oh man, I think there's eight of these. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oh, there's nine of them. So there is obviously no chance that nine will fit on this. So I'm going to have to do some digging and figure out, I'm like 99% sure this was purchased from one, two, three stitch and figure out what the fabric is so I can buy more because it would look real funky if like six of them were stitched on this and then three of them were stitched on something else, but I'll do the finish, the little pennant finish that Kathy has on her 
cover photos. I just think they're adorable. And I love all of her word puns. I think she is just very creative. Very clever designer. Okay, this is my most recent whip. And this is one... I started off... Okay, so let me just show you what it is. I'll have to put in the finished picture. But this is the Spooked Mystery Sampler by Lizzie Kate. So this is part one. And this is what it's going to look like roughly when it's done. So I started with part one after I finished the Christmas sampler because I just love them. I don't know. I just love Lizzie Kate. I love the design. A lot like um, the Christmas one, I've switched up quite a few of the colors. Not as many colors. Um, I did all of parts one and two and I'm working on part three. So let's see, here's part, sorry, I did not obviously iron this. There's parts one and two together. So there is actually no purple called for in any of these colors or any of the um, charts, but I liked it and it's, a Halloween color in my opinion so I wanted to incorporate it and then there's like a I don't know like an S yellow lemony lime color that's called for and that's used for the witch's face and then over here where the green is around the M it's called for and then a few other times but I just did not like it at all so I switched it out um, I did, it does call for a blue. I switched my blue out just for a different shade of blue. But I love it. I think it's adorable. And I hope to have part three finished in the next like couple weeks before my next video. Because I do plan on doing more videos. So let me just show you my thread for that. So I haven't shown you threads for any of these. If you're interested, just leave me a comment below and I will do some digging and figure out what the threads are and let you know. Let's see, this is being stitched on hmm, 32 count linen. Gretchen's Gray by HD Linen. Not sure. Bought it from Stitches and Things. And that's what they were on the tag, so. It is what it is. Okay. Let's see the threads. And I bought all these threads at Stitches and Things. Because I hate buying thread online. Because it never comes out the shade that you expect it to come out. And then I have to order more. Just so that. I do have something that I like that looks good. So I picked these out in person. So that was slightly an expensive trip. Okay, here are the different threads. And the purple one's hiding right back here between the, the oranges. So I love them. I think they're beautiful. I'm really enjoying this project. I've looked for other seasons and other holidays in this style where it goes, the sampler goes horizontal, but to my knowledge, Lizzie Kate doesn't have any. I know she has a spring Eastery mystery sampler, but that one is much wider. Well, I guess it's not much wider, but it's vertical. And it's not the same style, and I'm not really a fan of the design. So, I don't know. I'm kind of toying with the idea of creating my own for, like, spring and summer. But we'll see. Okay. And, oh, some exciting news. So, I mentioned I picked up those flosses from Stitches and Things. That is not my closest local native workshop. 
My closest one was actually 50 minutes away. I think that one's like two, 90 minutes, two hours away. Until a couple weeks ago because a new stitching store opened up in my town and I'm so stinking excited about it because I have zero problem buying patterns online. I think most of us are probably like that. But I hate buying fabric online and I hate buying floss online because like I said, the colors are never really true on your screen compared to what they look like. And I just wanna to touch it. I wanna get my hands on it. I wanna switch out colors. When I pull colors, my own floss for a pattern, I don't have a floss stash. I have, I have a little bit of a DMC stash, but I have no fancy floss stash. So what I do is I go to the store and I will pull all the called for colors and then I'll start switching from there. So if I know like all the browns and all the blacks and all the whites are fine, then I'll start switching out the other colors. And I, But I like to have them all there so I can see what they look like together. So this new store is actually owned by the designer of Autry Designs. She's a cross-stitch designer and it is called Riverview Stitching. And they took over, they purchased an old church and they have a really good selection of floss in store and a lot of fabric, a lot of linen. So it was a lot of fun to dig through that. So I bought linen for two projects that I'll show you and then a little bit of floss that I was missing for one of the projects that I'm about to show you. And they also have the huge table for open stitching six days a week. Come and go as you please. It's free to go to open stitching. Um, sometimes they'll stay open late and they'll have snacks. So I'm just, I'm really excited to go. And I know when my mom comes up in the summer to see the baby, she's already told me she wants to go to that store. Of course, we'll go to the store. Okay. My next, oh, this is a whip. Okay. One more whip and then two that are kitted up that will get worked on at some point this year. Okay, this one is... One Nation by Bygone Stitches. I'm sure you've seen this around. Tons of people are doing it. This one I'm stitching on 28 count pewter Lugana. I'm sorry. I'm so used to saying 28 count. This is 25 count. And I'm doing this one over one, which I love. This is also a sweet spot for me. I like the coverage. I don't know. Ooh, I got my thread in here. Okay. So I'm like two thirds of the way done with the stars part of this. And then I just, I wanted to do some red, so I did like two threads of floss in there just to I'll see to check. Way. I for sure switched up the white, but let me see if I switched up the blue or the red. Okay, let's see. For white, I'm using White Lightning by Weeks Dye Works. And then, whoops. Okay, blue I did not switch up. It calls for Blacksmith Blue by Classic Color Works. And then, I didn't switch up the red either. Red is Cupid by Classic Color Works. So let me grab, oh, the sun's coming in. Where'd my paper go? Here we go. Beautiful, beautiful colors. This is also the project that I learned about dye lots and various variances in dye lots because I initially, like I mentioned, I didn't have a LNS to go to, so I purchased a couple different whites, a couple different reds, and a couple different blues online from one, two, three stitch to decide what I wanted for my fabric. And I Decided on the white lightning, so I'm stitching and stitching and stitching and I'm getting close to running out. So I'm like, hey, you should order another one. So I ordered two more. My original white lightning was very much white and very much not variegated. My other two white lightnings are very much variegated. You probably won't be able to tell here, but it's definitely got some gray in there. So I'm hoping I have enough white lightning in my first game to eke out the rest of the stars in the the top part so it's not really noticeable. Wait, those are my colors. I love them. I think it's beautiful. And this one is on my whip go board quite a few times, so it will get some action this year. 
throw that back in there. Whoops, there's the skin. Okay, this one is my first kit, or my first project that's kitted up. It's not an actual kit. And this one will get stitched on this steer, for sure, for sure. My grandmother got me all the patterns and like all the floss that was in stock. So I think everything except for two different colors for Christmas 2020. And it is the Secret Santa by, surprise, surprise, hands-on design. So there are nine of these. And I don't know what in the world I was thinking. I purchased the fabric. I got a 32 count pearl gray Belfast linen. And this is the entire piece that I purchased. It is 13 by 18 inches. So I have no idea what I was thinking. There is no way in heck that nine secret Santas are going to fit on here. Like, even if I did them one over one, let's see, what does it say? Okay, so it was stitched on 32 count and it comes out to be, it's 42 stitches by 60 stitches. So if you do it, even if I did it over one, I don't think it would fit on here. And I don't believe I ever had intentions of doing this over one, so I don't know what I was, I probably just had a brain fart, who knows. But when I went to review stitching, I did purchase fabric that will fit all of these secret sandals. So this is 28 count mystic gray linen. And it's just, it's this pretty gray color. Not sure who the designer is. It's not on the tag. And then my last project that's kitted up, if you've been around for a while, you know this one has come with some trials and tribulations. Oh, let's see. Pause, please. Okay, so this is my cross stitch stocking that I, in theory, will be making for my daughter. It's from the Dimensions Gold Collection and it's called Secret Santa. Do we sense the thing in here? And I loved it. Just, I feel like it's very classic. I didn't want something that was childish, but it had a lot of bright co colors. Again, like I mentioned, the Lizzie Kate classic colors are my go-to for Christmas. So this came with 16 count. It says light blue, Ada. It is not light blue. It is very much white. And I started, I think I started in the middle. So I started somewhere like right here. And the problem I was having, well, one of the problems, a couple problems. Number one, it's on Ada. No offense if you stitch on Ada, but this Ada, I don't even have it in here. Super, super thick. And I hated the texture. I hated the way it felt. It's also white. And like two thirds of that stocking design is white or light gray or gray. And so I was putting in progress, but I didn't actually like see anything because it's white on white. And that was just not motivating whatsoever. So I decided to fix the fabric issue. So what I did was I purchased the exact same fabric that I'm using or going to use for my secret Santa, um, just in a very large cut. So it's 28 count mystic gray linen. I chose this for a few reasons. Number one, it's linen. I like 28 count linen, it's my sweet spot. It's soft, it's not stiff like the Ada. And because it's gray, I figured I'll be able to see my progress a bit better. So I don't think it'll really shine through or come through be behind the white stitches and the stocking. So that shouldn't be an issue, but I'll still be able to see my progress. So, I don't know, we'll see. If this doesn't work, then I'm just going to have to accept that I will never in the foreseeable future make cross stitch stockings. I think they're gorgeous. My sister, go check out her channel. She has made three. One for her, her husband, and her eight, no, he's nine month old, he's a ten month old son. And my daughter is two and a half almost, and she does not have a cross stitch stocking. She does have a quilted stocking. I made her a quilted stocking. I made her, myself, and my husband, 
all quilted stockings. So she does have a homemade mom made stocking. It's just not cross stitch. And I just think they're gorgeous. So I really need to buckle down and just do it. Okay. That's all for whips. So what I'm going to show you next is my whip go cord. So I am doing whip go this year. I figured what the heck, maybe it'll motivate me, especially on like the cross stitch stocking to get something done. Um, I'm going to go ahead and call it a success. I'm not exactly following whip go rules, but as they say, my board, my rules. So, okay, here's my board. So for January, number two and number 19 were called. So number two is a seasonal small. So that was my January, um, from a year of celebrations by hands on design. And then number 19 was hands on design secret Santa. And I have no idea why I had a brain fart, but I was thinking after I did the initial highlighting of my box in my head, I was like, Oh, okay. Seasonal small and Lizzie Kate mystery Halloween sampler. Sure. So I'm doing part one and I do all part one and I go back and look and I'm like, no, it's not Lizzie Kate Halloween sampler. It's hands on design secret Santa. So, oh, well I finished part one. Okay. So then February numbers get called. So February is, um, another hands on design secret Santa and the next part of Lizzie Kate Halloween, which initially should have just been part one because I never should have started on the first place, but I went ahead and did part two. I'm just kind of sucked in now. So part three is getting done too. So when I finish part three, I'm actually going to color in number 13, even though it has not been called because I will have finished that. So after I finish my Lizzie Kate Halloween three part mystery sampler, then I'm going to start on the uh, hands on design secret Santa, but I really like this. I may not be, I don't know, following the rules exactly or what have you, but it's motivating me and I'm getting cross stitch done. So I'm going to consider that a win. Okay. Last thing I have for you is a whip. It's not a cross stitch whip. It's a quilting whip. Um, I kind of mentioned and said it a couple times. I'm a quilter. You can see my sewing machine, my whole setup here. Uh, these cute little drawstring rainbow bags I made last year. So I started this quilt, these quilt blocks like four or five years ago. I just saw someone on Instagram who did low volume scrappy log cabin quilt and I thought it was gorgeous. So I started making blocks and I have an entire bag. You can't see it. It's on, down here on the floor of strips that are one and a half inches. I believe they're one and a half inches wide that are cut. I mean like, I'm not talking like a Walmart bag or a Ziploc bag. I mean like a huge bag, like huge bag full of them. It's probably like that deep too. And we knew we were going to try this fall to get pregnant. So I was like, you know what? This would be a super cute baby quilt. And it's gender neutral because I didn't want to find out the sex of the baby. So I have, there's no way I can hold this up here because I'm nearly backed up to my desk, but I'll insert a picture for you. And I am hand quilting this. I hand quilted my daughter's quilt and I just love the texture that it gives. Uh, I'll show you a couple of blocks close up that don't have any marker on them yet. So there are pinks in here, there are blues in here, but overall it's very gender neutral. So I fussy cut the center little two and a half inch squares for each block. There's little lion cotton steel. This one, oops, there's a thread. This one's a cute little doggy. What else do we have? This one's a little elephant. Yeah. Red Riding Hood. A little green truck from my absolutely favorite fabric line ever, Spectacle by Christian Robinson for cotton and steel. Love his artwork. Here's another little truck from that same line. So yeah, you get an idea the kinds of blocks. And then I am doing, I'll try to show you the quilting. I'm doing just Baptist fans hand quilted on there. And there is, that is a blue marker, but it's water soluble. It'll go away when it gets washed and it's going to be all crinkly and I love it so, 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 so much. And then for the backing, I ice dye my own fabric sometimes. And so I have a huge piece 
So it's just all these beautiful blues and greens and yellows. And then down here I had to piece it a little bit to get a piece that was large enough. And then I love it because you can really see the quilting in the back, on the back. So yeah, I have 14-ish weeks to get this done. And I would say in terms of the quilting, I'm probably I'm about halfway done. Really, it won't take long to finish it. I just have to put down the cross stitch and pick up the baby quilt. Which is a problem these days. If you're a multi-crafter, I'm sure you know that we tend to go through phases, like quilting phase, and a cross stitch phase, or a knitting phase, or a crochet phase, what have you. Right now I'm firmly in the cross stitch phase, so. I think that is all that I have. So, this upcoming week I have my last test for my OB class. And then I have off a week for spring break and we are driving down to New Orleans to visit my family and to do Mardi Gras, which I am so thrilled about. That's probably the thing I miss most about not living in Louisiana anymore is just Mardi Gras and king cake and that whole thing. And I'm so excited to take my daughter. She's two and a half and she's going to have the time of her life. My husband is super excited to take her. But we are driving and it's like 15 hours straight through so what we're planning on doing is leaving once my husband gets off of work either thursday or friday evening and we'll just drive through the night so she'll only be hopefully awake for about two or three hours before her actual bedtime and then drive through the night and get there in the morning and she'll have tons of energy and we won't but it'll be fine um, i'm sure my family is willing to entertain her for two or three hours while mom and dad catch up on some sleep and then down there, there is a cross-stitch store, which of course I'm going to go to. My sister will also be in town with her little boy for the whole week. So I'm thrilled because the last time I saw him, he was like three weeks old. So he's a, he's a big guy now. And I'm so excited for my daughter to meet him because it'll be the first time that the cousins meet. And she is all about baby dolls. And she brings her baby in the car and she sleeps with her baby and she dresses her baby and changes baby's diaper. So I'm excited to see how she acts with an actual baby. It'll be some good big sister practice for a couple months from now. And I am excited for the food. I am excited for the warm weather. I am excited to not see any of the fluffy white stuff for an entire week. And then we come back and I'll jump into my next course, which is seven weeks of peeps. So I'm really hoping not on the drive down, but maybe, maybe on the drive back and while I'm down there to get some, some stitching done. My goal is to have the Lizzie Kate Halloween sampler done for sure. And then maybe start on hands on design secret Santa. I do have a Mardi Gras chart, so maybe I'll pull that out and start working on that. Who knows? But until next time guys. Bye.